you know, I'm here to talk fights, not hugs, guys. So, <laughs> oh, <yeah. me>. yeah. <laughs> with that, we'll go ahead and we'll get started. I love the transition. We'll cover the main event. We got Irisil versus Nicholas. Yeah. I mean, first off, right off the bat, uh, this was probably, oh, man. This is close. I don't want to say it. It's recency biased, but I fucking love this fight. This might be yeah. my favorite fight of the year. It, it didn't have the crazy drama of like a ton of knockdowns and all this stuff. But, dude, this fight was fucking beautiful. It was amazing. I think. Wow. Fight? I mean, Your favorite fight of the year? Yeah. I'm not going to I'm not going to sit here and try to convince you that it's the best fight of the year. But oftentimes the best fight's not my favorite fight. This fight was it, it had a lot of things going for it. It's a rematch. Irsul lost his belt after fucking who knows how long in the first fight. He gets dropped in it. And then here we have the rematch. He comes out with the immortal mask still, one of the coolest walkouts in my opinion. Uh, and then they just proceed to have a beautiful fight, both of them. It was so fun. Nick was there for it. Pretty jealous of that. What did you think of it? So yeah, it's so beautiful. Like you said, uh, I agree exactly with everything you say. Well, it's it's not the most um, obvious candidate for fight of the year, and it will totally get overlooked by everyone, as as one fights often do. But you know, everyone was raving about Potan and Khalil Roundtree, rightly so. I actually caught the end of that fight. It was the only thing Ooh. I saw on the UFC show the other day. But everyone's raving about it, like, oh. This is amazing, but you get that every week, every month in my yeah. championship. You know what I mean? <laughs> Just go and watch some kickboxing, guys, because that's pretty much what you were watching there. And this was beautiful. Two guys in their absolute prime. Alexei Nicholas never lost a fight before, and he was the first man to beat Nicholas uh, to beat Ursel in eight years. Last time they fought in June, and Regan Ursel had to adapt, change his game, and he. He said it would be beautiful violence, and it was. It really was. I kind of I mean, stress how much I love this fight, too. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know he said that because it is literally perfect. Because, And like you said, he had, he had to change his game and adapt because the first fight, he ate so many leg kicks, and that's something that people have been... That's one of the things when you have a dominant champ, there's so much footage of that champ that people can watch and pick up habits and tendencies and then exploit them. And one of the big things was the leg kicks. And you see this fight, he starts switching his stance to southpaw pretty much immediately to take away that rear low kick from, from Nicholas. But then Nicholas, instead of being like, I don't know what to do about this, he starts blasting that body kick, which is perfect up against uh, with the open stances. And so you're seeing Irsel come in with a new game plan and then Nicholas adapting to it immediately. And just both these guys went toe-to-toe -to -toe for the whole fight. And it was fucking awesome, dude. What did you think, Romero? I've been so it, in, in it. the beginning. Irsil seemed to be winning a lot of the close-up battle, right? Every time that they were in the mm. phone booth and they were exchanging, Irsil seemed to have the last laugh. Uh, a lot of times with that extending right, as soon as yeah. Nicholas seemed to be exiting a little bit. But as the fight continued going on, it seemed like it flipped around, where. Nicholas then started actually stringing together some combinations in close. But what I noticed is that he started off with a leg kick and then worked his way up, body kick, and then continued the combo up top, uh, which is different, right? Because usually you see the combo starting up top and then they finish with the leg kick. They finish with a kick, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I, I found that to be very, very interesting for Nicholas in the later rounds. Yeah, and and normally, normally it's Irsel who starts taking the later rounds. And this fight, the first three rounds, he was like – an avalanche just i mean he always has a crazy pace he puts a big pace on people and that's kind of what got him caught in the first fight when he got dropped he came in a little too reckless maybe um but those first three rounds of this fight just non-stop forward pressure i think that was probably another adjustment besides the stance to which if i can crowd this guy he won't be able to kick my legs as effectively mm. but it was exhausting to watch and both these guys stayed that output the whole fight they, they didn't slow down really it's Alpha crazy. was amazing. Irso with the nonstop pressure the entire fight. Um, were, were you pretty happy with the decision, both of you? I, I was. I thought Irso took yeah. it. What did you think, Nick? Yeah, I, I spoke to the three judges afterwards, and I think two of them gave it 3-2. Irso and Shane gave it 4-1. Uh, 
And I was happy with yeah. either. I, I thought I agree with you, Will and Ramiro, that Ursel came out like a house on fire. I think he faded a little bit at the end. Round five was clearly uh, Nicholas, but Nicholas, yes. I think uh, Regian got the job done in the first three rounds. Pretty much the way I, I thought. Same with Dibella and Prajanshai, and that's what I thought that scorecard would be three two to Dibella. I thought it was the same. He got the job done over the first three rounds. Nicholas tried to come back, but couldn't do enough without a knockout. Absolutely no problems with the scorecard. Don't think Alexi can have any problems. He was seemed a bit unhappy backstage, calling for a trilogy rematch. But I, th- I think Regian's earned the right to move on now. He's got another belt to Muay Thai. He he told me he wants to defend that next. I think that's fair because you've got other guys over there waiting for him, like Dmitry yeah. Mechikov. But yeah, yeah, all good, all good with the scores. I think I think too. Um, it's one of those things where a fight like this. It's so good and it's so close that, like, Shit, if you sorry. lose it, it's <laughs> you're good. If you lose, it's probably you're like, how a fight this close? You think you're winning? Mm-hmm. There's no, there's no way either of these guys thinks they think they're losing this fight at, when all things are said and done, you know. So, yeah, I, I don't blame him for being like, yeah, a little, a little peeved about the no decision. Upset. Yeah, because like yeah. when you're in the fire, you know. Genevieve says, uh, oh, there it goes. She said, uh, honestly, most of this card had me pretty bored, which is not what I expect from one. <laughs> like, if there's uh, not blood, Genevieve's not entertained. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and shout out to uh, Blunder Rope says, not enough blood for Genevieve. And uh, yeah, shout see. out Pepper in the It wasn't chat. The, the best card, but I think it had some, it had that fight of the year for me, and it had John Lineker doing John Lineker things, and oh. had a Johannes Dupinan another great knockout for him i think you're going to talk about it in a bit so yeah it wasn't as good as last friday's one you know the friday fights 81 but still had some cool stuff yeah and and even on paper there was a lot of interesting matchups on this card that you know didn't come through or didn't end up happening um that i think would have been it would have put it over a little bit more but even on paper like this wasn't going to compare to friday fights 81 right like that card was so insane and they stacked mm-hmm. it and it all delivered. That's not always going to happen, you know? Um, I still, but I still very much enjoyed it. Um, <laughs> and speaking of, uh, Pepper says thought on thoughts on one, one sixty nine back, uh, being back in Thailand, we will probably get to that. Um, yes. Do you want to move on but, to the next one? Will? Yeah. Nick already brought it up. Yep. We John had uh, John Lineker, Lineker things. versus Alexi Balico. <laughs> Dude, what? It, look, John Lineker. St- we're t- we, people are talking about Irsel being underrated, rightfully so. But Lineker, I don't think people talk about him enough for being one of the best action fighters of all time. He might not have reached a UFC belt or one title and things like that. Um, but, I mean, the guy is always in crazy fights. Crazy fights. Either violence is happening to him or he's throwing it back. <laughs> like, how many times have you seen a boring Lineker fight? Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I can't think of any. And uh, Nick, to your to your credit, you were like, everybody's talking about, um, you know, Poetan versus Khalil, rightfully so. Uh, but that thing, ha- those fights happen all the time. Uh, and I made this for Chester. <laughs> Uh, earlier in the week. <laughs> <laughs> you watching the fights? Yes. And you'd like to see more fun fights? Yep. Since one has really good fights, you'd enjoy watching one. That makes sense to me. So start watching one. I'll just watch UFC. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, dude. It's crazy. You, the amount of conversations I've had like that is insane. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, before we look at pictures, um, let's just <laughs> look at this clip. Of what Lineker did in this fight. That step in left hook, man, is lightning fast. And it comes with so much power. And we know it's coming. They know it's coming. Yeah. yeah. Like so that's the first knockdown. He knocks him down. And, and in my notes, I put down Lineker up close when he smells blood. It's like a little Tasmanian devil, dude. Yeah. There's a thing. Because I think one. on the last one where he gets him up against the ropes and he just starts ripping to the body. Dude, the way he does body shots, he makes his 
he he just starts hooking, right? He's just left, right, left, right, left, right. And instead of going off rhythm like a lot of people go, he just starts going body head. And he's like, you don't always have to do some weird stutter step. You just have to start ripping to the body and the head. I mean, he killed him. There's another great one. Uh, Hooking with the boys? Yeah, look this at This one right here. Oh, what an angle. That's a good shot right there. Oh. I mean, that's terrifying. Yeah. That's terrifying. <laughs> Dude, I was oh. I was uh, in the taking of one of the vans back to the hotel, and we had to go pick up Alexi. At the, he had to go to the hospital after Ooh. that. Feeling, I Ooh. think it was just feeling nauseous or nothing serious, but just a little um, concussion, huh? Yeah, and the funny thing is, not funny, but he he's been doing that to everyone. He's fought in one, absolutely flatlining. And I put my clip of that fight on Twitter, and then some someone messaged under saying like, "Oh, I'd love to see some evidence of." Alexi Balico being dangerous because I called him dangerous. So I just put my video of Alexi doing that to Stefan Karodi a few months ago. And yeah, he, he did uh, it to uh yeah. <laughs> who's the, who's the other one he did to Suakim? Yeah, he's he's got a couple of good knockouts on one Friday fights and also now fight night. I think he yeah, he made his his prime video debut, everyone would call it against Karodi in June and that July, was nasty. Sure. Yeah. So he definitely was dangerous, but yeah, I think you know Liam Harrison was smart to avoid this fight with John Lineker. They were trying to make that forever. They were trying to make Lineker versus Rod Tang for Denver. I think those guys were very smart to, or fortunate to <laughs> not be available, shall we say, injured perhaps, because John Lineker seems to just have some sort of secret for Muay Thai that works. He's not using any elbows, not clinching. Just those, those hands, those hands of just stone. Just those hands of stone, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the dark yeah, arts. Let's see how far it goes. Can he can he go all the way to a title fight? Who knows? But I'm enjoying it. Long long may it continue. John Lineker in <laughs> Muay Thai. Why not, huh? Yeah, so that brings us to the next thing. Uh, shout out Combat Sports today. Uh, it says Lineker versus Sexon. I want Lineker, which would be a banger, but I would rather, and Nick, you might feel a certain type of way about this, um but i think i can i can present it if you are a certain type of way about it i think i can present it in a way to get you on board <laughs> i want lineker versus cool up down i want and i want it really bad that's a good fight yeah and i'll say what i was going to say anyways you have been jonesing for cool up down to yeah. get the contract right. lineker is not fighting on friday fights unless it's a tent pole bring cool up down Way to, to the main in. stage, put him up against Lineker. They both crack with the left hand. I want to see the left meteorite versus the hands of stone. Yeah, I need that fight. No more selling needed to me. I'm on board already. Because <laughs> I mean, realistically, they they might want to do Lineker versus like a big bigger name. Shout out Chummy Boy says uh, he's so short he just keeps throwing in the pocket. <laughs> it's perfect. It makes it easier to rip to the body. Yeah, You're it really there. does. You're already there. Yeah. Um, yeah, Cool Up Down would be a good one. Uh, I know he called out Raw Tang. Uh, I mean, look at that picture, dude. Moments before disaster, that last picture. Um, wow. Yeah, I know he called out Raw Tang. Um, I don't think that's happening. There's just no way that's happening. Uh, at least not in the timetable that Lineker... I mean, Lineker fought in Denver, and then he fought again now. I was going to say put him on Atlanta now that that's not happening in atlanta i don't know but he didn't really take much damage well actually even in this one during the finishing sequence like <laughs> balico's tagging he's getting clipped he just doesn't care he just doesn't affect <laughs> <Yeah. him. laughs> and asa uh Ten pow was also landing shots on him he's he was landing that knee up the middle which is a great weapon against someone as they said a short with a shorter stature the knee up the middle is perfect he just eats it he just keeps coming forward. Yeah, he takes, most, he's the king of taking one shot to give a bigger one, I think. As someone saw, said that on social somewhere, so it's, it's absolutely correct. And it's, working it does. and it's working for him. And I think one is very happy because I think it's working for them too. Well, I guess oh, yeah. they're saving some money on his MMA purse, which is probably astronomical relatively. And he's getting the 50K bonus when he does his job. So I'm sure there's not too much of a disparity from what he gets in MMA. So yeah. it's good for them. 
Linux is happy to just stay active. We saw he's trying to fight anyone, anything. You know, he did the, the Shinya Aoki fight, at whatever that was, lightweight in Japan on crazy. one hour's notice. You know, Linux doesn't care. He just wants to fight, knock people out, get paid. He'll come back in a month if they have something for him, for real. So oh, I love it. Perfect fighter for one championship. Dude, and he's so chill, too. He was the last person I, I talked to in denver as i left in the morning from the hotel he was just sitting in that couch that was right by the exit door and i was just like congrats and he just nods and then he like stands up he like shakes my hand and stuff and i'm like yeah safe travels he, <laughs> he speaks like a zero words of english yeah completely zero i'll try and say like hello he's like what, <laughs> what are you on? he's got very little english but he doesn't need any you know but no. shout out to uh no Mundau. they uh they helped translate my interview with him check that out on my channel if you have not he says he wants to fight not just rod tank but super lek you know for the belt one day oh, so oh, oh, oh. that'd be cool i love throw him in the mix and and to to nick's point if you don't already follow nick on everything definitely do so because he does also cover way better than we do i mean he's at the events he's posting sick ass videos from the stands uh great interviews with everybody yeah. uh that's what we call the, him the goat you know that's but why he's guys, the goat you guys do much better fight breakdowns for real i have no idea what i'm talking about i i love listening <laughs> to you talk about these fights even right now You're very spot on and i'm learning i'm learning right now so watch hey, me but also that. keep watching these guys <laughs> yeah i appreciate it and if you and to make it easy the links his links are in our description of this video if you don't follow click them and follow pepper saying uh, linica versus stupinon uh... oh i think you let both those stars yes, rise not yet parallel not yet there's no need for them to meet right now. They can both just keep ascending, doing what they're doing with the hands. And uh, you know what's better than one shooting star? Two shooting stars. Exactly. Yeah. Let just let them shine. Let them shine. Yeah. All right, we'll move on here. We also had Johan Estupinon versus Zakaria El Jamari. Yeah, speaking of Estupinon, uh, who also fought in Denver. Uh, yes. And this one, I was a little bit more skeptical of. I'm not going to lie because. While Lineker did eat some shots from Ace of Ten Pow, nothing really phased him or wobbled him. Whereas the Supernon got caught and dropped, I think twice in his fight with Klamako. And I was like, yeah, he didn't get knocked out or anything, but getting dropped is it's a quick turnaround. I don't necessarily like that. Um, and then he was like, shut the fuck up, dude. You don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> because this man, he fights like a man possessed, dude. He is right off the bat, he's super fast. As soon as it starts, he's a fast starter, right? Yeah. Uh, defense, ah, why? You know? Who needs it? Who needs it? Yeah, just throw a variety of strikes. He's not going to know what's coming. Uh, yeah. He, he got caught in one where he had to take a step back, and you, you could tell that he was yeah. kicked hard. Twice, early on in the fight, and then once he had uh, El Jamari hurt up against the corner, he cracked him with a big shot, and he wobbled. And even El Jamari was like, ah, I got you with that one. I yeah, yeah. right here. <laughs> Yeah, right there. Right there. <laughs> yeah. Which is great. Which is great. Yeah, but, you know, Stupignon seems to recover quickly. I'll give oh, him yeah. that. And there's this one where, you know, he he gets rocked in the, at first. He's taking a step back. Uh, and then Jamari comes at him, and he takes a sidestep and clips him with the left himself as yeah, Jamari's coming yeah. in. So he still seems to have – like his wits to him, even when he's a little rocked. Again, either he's not as hurt as we think, or he just recovers really quickly. Yeah, I think it might be a little bit of both. The first one in the, at the beginning of the fight when he got cracked, what scared me is he wiped his face a few times. And that's always scary because that makes me think broken orbital or something like that. Mm. Um, when it feels like there's like like blood running down, but it's not. And it, it, it's a weird feeling and he clearly had it. I don't think anything was broken uh, after because obviously he kept taking shots on that same side and nothing happened. Um, but man, he's a sniper too, dude. He he really reminds me of uh, it's like a mix between for UFC fans Anderson Silva and Pereira. The way he hops in, oh, he hops in like he's Alex Pereira, but the way he comes forward with his striking and his shot selection really reminds me of early days Anderson Silva. Like the the one that fought Chris Lieben, the one that broke on the scene, right? Where he was just wow. steamrolling people. 
I'm not saying he's that level, right? But it just remind like it looks like it. He has the same kind of looks. But even the um, fact that he reminds you of is a pretty mm -hmm. big compliment. Yeah, and uh, there was no photo of the shot that finished the fight, um, but luckily one has footage of it okay. somewhere. Um, <laughs> I thought I had it queued up. Did they delete it? There's no way they deleted it. Uh, no, why would they delete it? Oh, here it is. Okay. God. Yes. And the uppercut another, the left hand. another beautiful adjustment. Because in that round specifically, you had Jamari start shelling up, and he stayed mm -hmm. like that without any action. And so there's a part where Jamari's up against the corner, and Johan literally comes up and, like, feints one uppercut, feints the other uppercut, feints the right. And he's like, okay, okay I'm trying to think of an angle yeah. to come at him with. And Jamari did nothing. And so it's yeah. just Johan thinking, like, okay, what's the angle? Okay, I think I got it. Next time he goes around does the exact same thing, lands that uppercut, raises the chin, comes in with the left, done. Done. I mean, he sniped him with that shot. That left hand legit shot him. Like, he shot him. Yeah, and then he's looking up at the, was it Olivier Cost? Right? Mm -hmm. And I, it almost looked like Olivier was doing the 10 count, and he was like, was that was that eight? Was that, <laughs> like, he was asking him as he's on his back, and Olivier counts a 10, waves it off. But uh, what a fun fight. What a fun fighter. Yeah. What's up with his brother? Is his brother going to get signed? Yes. Do you have any insight on that? Yeah. yeah I, I, well, I did an interview with Johan and then um, Jordan jumped in. And um, <laughs> yeah, crazy. Twin brothers might be my new favorite. Twins in one. The Rotellas have some competition now. Sure. <laughs> uh, these guys are crazy. I think Jordan is not as loose in the head as uh, Johan, <laughs> but he may be soon. Yeah, Johan is just a madman. He's he just. Watch the interview, he's just screaming. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and um, Jordan's a bit more reserved, but no, I love these guys. I mean, I love Johan, he's a star in the making. I like, I like Zachariah as well, he's he's a cool dude and he always brings it. But 250k bonuses now, I think, for Johan back to back, just like Lineker in one month. They are clearly strapping a rocket to this guy, I think they're gonna make him a star. Doesn't matter. He's kind of like Poetan, isn't he? He's got, not got a word of English, but he brings it in the <laughs> ring. He always knocks people out. He doesn't need to speak English. Fighting is a universal language. Yeah, and I don't think, you know, Brazil, Spain, Colombia, like Spanish-speaking, Portuguese-speaking are, are kind of markets for one, really. But why not? Mm -hmm. This guy, like you said, this universal language can translate over to uh, to anything. I really like him. That's all I'm going to say. High energy. Yeah. Yeah. Nice smile, exciting fights, wonderful dancer. Teeth. Yeah, wonderful. Yes, teeth. yes, yes. He like checks all the boxes, right? I was standing right next to him. I just couldn't help but think you've got a great set of gnashes on you. Um, <laughs> perfect. Yeah, yeah. Really, really nice kid as well. And that is him. You'll see him around fight week. He's not putting it on for the cameras, you know, during the fight and after. He is just like that around the hotel, around the face-offs, around the weigh-ins. Everything. He's just mad. Just absolutely <laughs> crazy. You know, he's got so much spots. energy. Yeah, so much energy. We'll see if that he's got that energy in three or four years after you know <laughs> a few more knockdowns if he keeps fighting like that without any defense. But um, for now, it's it's working for him. But he may have to tighten some things up against the elite of that division, yes. right? Yeah, that's yes. the that's the real ticket because the Clamaco fight, the first knockdown was because he dropped Clamaco and he rushed in and got caught. And in this fight, twice, he got a little overzealous and got cracked. Didn't put him down or anything, but that's now twice now where it's like, hey, man, be a little reserved. But these like fights like this, what can separate him from like a good fighter who gets finishes to like uh, an evolving fighter who who's, can become great is like, even though uh, there's some fighters who only learn lessons from losses and... They're like, oh, I won the fight. I don't really need to tighten up anything I won. Yeah, he hit me, but I still won. So, like, why am I going to change my game or anything like that? But if he can learn and adapt despite winning, like, it shouldn't take a loss to make you learn. You know what I mean? Yep. So, hopefully, that's the case for him because I do want to see him go as far as, like, possible. It's so much fun. I just worry if there's a ceiling on it with 
the division he's in, you know, yeah. is he going to get that uh, fight against the man who holds the belt? <laughs> uh, <laughs> seeing as not even Superlek can get that, but mm, yeah, just I want to see a little bit more. He's, there, there's plenty of guys he can fight in the meantime. They don't have to rush him, but he is very busy, right? If, if eventually he may be knocking on the door for a sh- title shot in a year or two, and again, uh, as many stars as we can have, all ascending. Let's do it. Yeah. But you know, there's there's just uh there's some problems in the flyweight Muay Thai division, you know, with Rod Tang not seemingly defending the belt against everyone who perhaps deserves it. You know what I mean? Nice, <laughs> but yeah. um, well, we'll see. One one of my biggest like detractors from combat sports, and it happens all the time, where it's just like. It's just part of the game, but it's unfortunate. It's my least favorite thing in combat sports probably is fighters who the window's so small and they earn a title shot with what they're doing. And for whatever reason, things outside of their control, they don't get the title shot when they deserve it and they end up getting it. Either either they don't end up getting it ever or they end up getting it too late. And I just hate when somebody clearly deserves a title shot, has to fight a couple more times and they end up losing or something, or they get injured, and then that sets as a setback, and they get passed up. Now this next guy earned the title shot, and he never climbs his way back up. And it's it's so depressing for me when there's someone like that. I want mm. there's people who I understand. Sometimes you got to give a title shot to someone for star power because at the end of the day, it is an entertainment business, and you need people to watch so that you can keep putting on shows. But there's a meritocracy with fighting where. It doesn't matter your background. It doesn't matter uh, if you had a bunch of money in your like it, while you're growing up, and you got had access to the best gyms and everything paved your way so that you could focus just on fighting. And you could get matched up with someone who had nothing, came from nothing, worked way harder than you because you know they had to provide for their family as a kid and things like that. But once they get into the fight, none of that matters. And that person who came from nothing can still beat you in a fight. And when those people get passed up for moments of greatness like title shots and what that can do financially for you that really sucks it's it's such a bummer for me when someone earns something fighting is when you earn something in fighting you fucking earn it like there's so much that goes into earning something in the fight business and if you earn something and you never get it that sucks it's my least favorite thing in fighting yes that was deep that's my soapbox that was deep <laughs> that was deep will I, was, yeah. I almost shed a tear for sure that was really didn't make any sense. I have no halfway through. I was like, "Am I making sense right now?" <laughs> it did. It, it made perfect sense. It made perfect sense. Yeah. Uh, and so, for those that are tuning in for the first time, we can go deep over here, and uh, <laughs> you know, we we make sure that we uh, attract all demographics. But yes, we try to cover uh, all the guys, bases. Yeah, you cover all the bases. Do you guys want to move on to the last fight we're going to cover? Yes. Yeah, Unless Nick, do you have anything right. else for a super young? No, I, I just think. We may be prematurely talking of title shots here because there's a bunch yeah. of other guys in front of him. <laughs> yeah, in yeah. That division, you know, we didn't see Kong Tor any fight, but you know, I think he's going to be higher. There's Nakrob, uh, Dead Wang. Like, there's a few guys. Um, then you you got Jacobs there, Dennis Porch. So plenty of fights still for uh, Johan to have before Definitely. we talk about title fights. Obviously, super let's just late. enjoy the ride. Let's enjoy the ride for now. You know, <laughs> enjoy the yeah. ride. Yeah. There we go. All right, we're going to cover Botelio versus Tong Poon. Tong Poon has been on a rough stretch lately, huh? He kind of burst onto the scene. Everybody's falling in love with him. The walkouts are fantastic. He's got the chain. He's got the sunglasses. He's got the tattoo on his chest. Nice guy. Dude, walking well. out like he's from East L.A., dude. Every time I see this guy, I love it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and, he, and, dude, he cracks. He, he comes out to bang, dude. And... This one, he got, had a little bit of trouble getting started, I think. He kept getting stung every time he was trying to come in. I thought... Uh, they get Ruiz, stung, they clinch, they yeah. clash, they clinch, they clash, they clinch. Uh, so, it, it, I mean, for him, it's probably hard to get in a rhythm. Yeah, and, and speaking of rhythm, Rui did such a great job of... He, he didn't have a lot of tendencies, at least early on. As he got tired, he kind of did a little bit more, but... You know, the front kick to the body, the elbows, the the step in knee, the leg kicks. Like he was really showing him so many different things where Tong Poon would, would blitz in and sometimes he'd step back, 
snipe him with the counter. Sometimes he'd crash in with an elbow. So even Tong Poon, as he enters, it's like, is this guy about to crash into me or is he about to pull counter me? Yeah. And yeah, exactly. He kept him guessing. It, I just, the, it took a while for Tong Poon to kind of figure out what was happening, I thought. Later on, he, he started, you know, tagging him a bit. Um, but I think it was just a little bit, a little uh, too late. Um, I want to give a shout out to Olivier Koss. This was his first time refing in a while. Yes, and nice he had his back. work cut out for him in this one because that third round, dude, it was hilarious because they, they, like Ramiro, you said, they clash and they clinch. And he's like, all right, separate. And Botelio's pretty much up, right? He's, we won the first two rounds, in my opinion. And I think he probably knew that. And he's like, I just have to survive and I'll win this fight. So he's clinched and he's probably dead tired too because his output was insane. But <laughs> they'd clinch. Tong Poon would be the one initiating the clinch most of the time, but then he'd hook him with like an overhook on one side and hug him like this side with the underhook. And then Olivier would step in and be like, all right, break, break. And <laughs> Tong Poon would put his hands up and <laughs> Rui would look at him like, okay, yeah, separate. Like what's happening? He's holding on to me as he's like holding on to him from the far side yeah. sneakily. And Olivier's like, dude, you have to stop holding on and pretending like you're not holding on. <laughs> it was so <laughs> funny, dude. <laughs> It was so because like he'd look at him like, man, get this guy off me as he's like around his back from the other side. <laughs> but man, Olivier had his work cut out for him in this one. But it was a fun fight. Um, you guys mentioned uh, earlier, uh, actually, I think it was you, Nick, uh, that you know we have Lineker that's willing to take a shot to throw another one of his own. Now, Tang Poon, he gets hit with the left. He still waves Botelio towards him. Right, he's telling him, "Come on, I want some more." There's this point where he's up against the ropes. And Botelio misses by like, it's got to be centimeters, man. Like misses his nose. He's going left, right, and you just see no head movement from Tong Poon, <laughs> but you see his jaw just clinch. Yeah. He's just biting down, just you. staring at Botelio. And I was like, dude, what are you doing? Move, get some head <laughs> movement going. But that dude, he'll take it. He'll eat that shot and crack back. He will. Uh, and Blunderbuff says, Botelho hate her for life after all that holding. Yeah, that's tough, man. Uh, Pepper says, I feel like he should stand more at the distance rather than blitzing in, ending up in the clinch. Uh, I'm assuming you're just talking about Tong Poon. Um, yeah, the blitzes just weren't working, man. It just wasn't working for him. And I think part of it, it was probably maybe out of fr frustration because he was kind of getting picked apart in the earlier fight. Um, and just he was just kept guessing and he was just like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm blitzing in. I'm trying to crack, land my shots. And it was just ultimately getting him into the clinch and, you know, he needed to finish in that third round and you can't, he's not going to get it there. But it was a fun fight. I enjoyed it. I, and to Blunderpub's point, he said he's a hater for life. I might be the opposite. I'm actually very excited to see his next fight because yeah, the third round was a little, huh? But the first two, I was like, man, actually, this guy's firing on all cylinders. I really like what I was seeing. Yeah, I'm I'm a I'm the maybe the president of the Rui Botello fan club for real. <laughs> oh. <laughs> this guy is so underrated. It's unbelievable the amount of hate he gets. Well not hate, <laughs> just, like, just indifference towards him. He has fought the biggest names in one, Pan Pyak, Superlek. He oh he never says no. Tong Poon's in dangerous fight, but he nullified him completely. Uh I got the scorecards, yeah, here it was one uh, abby gave it 30 27 but uh ricky and who was it shane yeah 29 28 probably more what i would think like you said um yeah i just thought i thought Rui showed he's a level above just he had yeah. so much more um technically it, it was beautiful to watch him in person you know and he he did the same to jang pai mian uh i really i really want to see also very good yeah, yeah. I, I want to see Rui versus John De Bella. I think that would be a super Ooh. high technical fight. Because, uh, you know, Muay Thai, he'll do it, but kickboxing is really where he's, he's best. So, uh, excellent win for him. And he's he's quite funny, I think. You, you, you should watch his interviews. You know, he, he should be given more attention. Very eloquent. He he, he was saying some funny stuff. Tong Poon was like juggernaut from Marvel. You know, <laughs> uh, it, was, it was cool. Yeah, I, I think Rui needs to have a either Prajanchai next or Dibella. Maybe Dibella makes sense because um seems like Prajanchai are not going to do the Dibella rematch immediately. So 
you could do either like a, a interim kickboxing thing at strawweight with Rui and John DiBello, or you could do a number one contenders thing. Perfect. Um, I know that John DiBello and his dad and the team wanted it in Atlanta, but Atlanta has moved. Might be a good segue now to talk about that. But yeah, Rui Botello, I can't say enough good things about him. Nice man, nice fighter, uh, really cool dude. And I think he's still young enough, 31, I think. He's got right in his prime. He put some respect on his name, you know. Reggie Nelson was asking for one to promote him more. I think Rui Botello as well could could uh, benefit from that. Obviously, Tong Poon is going to get promoted. He's Thai. He's, he's fun. He's yeah. got the look. Uh, he's a nice dude. But um, if you call yourselves the, the home of martial arts and we're the best strikers on the planet, got to promote those guys who are the best strikers on the planet. That is Reggie Ooh, and Ursula. Call. That is Rui Botello. Show my boys some love. Come on, guys. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm very high on Rui. I don't think he gets enough respect. And um Blunderbub, not a huge fan. But uh you know, the whole <laughs> but, thing is smart. You know, that's he's using but, his brain. He's got he's got fight IQ for days. To Blunderbub's credit, he said, Okay, but I am a casual, so you I'm can't get mad, mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> not not mad. Um I just think when I watch Rui Batello, I learn things and it's just you when you go to Lumpini, you watch a lot of guys just crashing into each other, like yeah. two cars heads on, but when you see how he can mix in defense, you know, he's not getting tagged the way Johan was, for instance. You know, he's he's mm. smart. He still had a lot of – he had a bad couple uh, scratches, shall we say, on his face. But just beautiful to watch. I'm sorry yeah. to say it. If you don't like Rui, <laughs> I don't think you like fighting, you know. <laughs> Here's the thing. I wasn't going to say this. I was going to hold this because I already made my my – leap of a comp for a super non with uh Pereira and uh, anderson silva but i'm gonna say it after that you inspired me to say it <laughs> i had i'm not saying he's as good so don't oh boy here we get go. all crazy but that first the first two rounds his shot selection his output his volume his like you said his awareness his distance control all that stuff really reminded me of john jones like young john jones Whoa. where Whoa. i'm not <laughs> rich with them. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I'm not saying yeah. Jones or like that, but he gave a lot of that are very reminiscent of John Jones, where John Jones had people guessing and had people frozen and had people rushing because they were like, dude, I am getting picked apart. He throws these front kicks to the body, he throws the front kick up top, he throws the leg kick, the, the outside body kick. Everything is slotted to look the same. So he's so you don't know which one's coming. He like his entries were so good. I swear the way he would sometimes pull counter and sometimes crash in with a knee or an elbow, even the step in wasn't the same. Uh, sometimes he's stepping with the elbow. Sometimes he's stepping with a knee. Like you just don't know what's coming. And it really reminded me of John Jones. I'm not saying he is John Jones level. I don't think he's the goat, but I was very impressed those first two rounds. I was like, dude, this is some slick shit. Blunder says Blunderbub, yes. <laughs> yes, I'm sure he's a much better person than John Jones. <laughs> yes, yes, 100%. I All haven't right, met well, John hey. Jones, but Rui's a yeah. very nice person. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure John Jones is, is great to meet at public events. Well, it depends. Uh, events, <laughs> public events, as long as there's no alcohol around, as long as yeah. it's, the public event is not at a strip club. As long <laughs> okay, as, uh, okay, there we go. Yeah. I was going to say, yeah. depends on the venue, but yeah. John Jones so, in private, horrifying. To Dana's <laughs> point, you put you go in the room with John Jones, only John Jones walks out. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. my God. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So Nick mentioned, you know, uh, 168 being moved. 169. Sorry, 169 being moved. Uh, no longer in Atlanta, right? So you guys want to talk about that? Yeah, we could talk about that. Um, glad I did not buy my plane tickets. <laughs> yeah. I was very, very close to. Yeah. Yeah, boy. I did. did. <laughs> yeah. <really. laughs> Look, I think I'll be able to get a refund for my flight. I think. Pretty sure. Um, but that being said, it that does suck. Uh, there's probably a lot of people who can't. Um, and it is unfortunate. 
we had a ton of uh yeah shout out pepper uh brought this up earlier look it is not ideal for i think everybody involved that this got moved um there's probably some silver linings that you can find um pepper says well i guess it'll be a while before i see you guys in person yeah yeah uh that would have been the reunion uh denver yeah. for us was very yeah. cool it would have been uh we were very excited we had some new tricks up our sleeve after learning the lay of the land a little bit in denver um some new equipment was purchased perhaps uh <laughs> to make uh but it is what it is i'll use that for short films anyways um <laughs> but uh at the end of the day um there's lots of speculation on what uh transpired i think what did one say it was um uh, partnership obligations with Thailand. Um, uh, I don't know what that means. Uh, but I know it sucks that we're not going to be able to see this live because your boy cannot fly to Bangkok on a month's notice. Uh, it's a good $1,000 more than the flight to Atlanta was. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I look, Obviously, they say, uh, shout out Dark Side, by the way, they're going to make Christian Lee fight at Lipkini. <laughs> Didn't think I'd see it. Yeah, I mean, they, look, there's a lot of things about this that are not great. Uh, obviously, Tawan Chai, not on the card anymore. That was kind of, uh, the cat was out of the bag, I think, when Chatri talked about it in that press conference. I think it was your question, actually, Nick. You asked him yeah. about uh, Super Bond versus Smoking Joe and whether that meant the winner of that would fight Tawan Chai in Atlanta. And Chatri's like, well, we made this fight because we're not really sure if Tawan Chai is going to make that fight. And I was like, well, Tawan Chai is not making that fight. Mm -hmm. uh, once he said that, I was like, there's no way. Um, so that obviously is a big hit on the card. Um, there's rumor, the rumors about uh, Rod Tang being off uh, his fight. Um, and my line of thinking is, yeah, if Tawan Chai is not on the card, and like, that's not confirmed, that's still just rumors, but if Rod Tang's off and Tawan Chai's off and you're in a big arena, uh, it's going to be a tough sell, and there's, it's just not good. So they're like, look, let's cut our losses and move, I'm assuming. Shout out John says, uh, what would happen to the Jacob Smith? Rod? Yeah, I mean, that fight's still on as of right now, right? There's no... I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I I'm know there's rumors. Thai, Thai media is sort of telling me rumors that Rod Tang's not going to take the fight. And um, you never know with Rod Tang, right? Yeah. So we'll see. We'll see. I, I have nothing concrete. But yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm sad this show is not in Atlanta, but I'm, I'm kind of glad I'm saving a shitload of money. <laughs> spent a lot going to denver it wasn't cheap the flight or the hotel and generally everything in america you guys is Dude. fucking expensive i don't know why <laughs> um it's because everything's it's not me huge, saying dude. like get biden kamala harris out or whatever trump but it's uh, <laughs> ray flores is always telling me inflation's gone crazy bro <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah i but yeah I'm, I'm happy to save that money and obviously lumpini is an easier trip for me and now i get to like have a nice chill four weeks here and really yeah. relax don't have to get there early to adjust for jet lag and i probably would have stayed in america because you know you don't get there often so i would have done some holidaying as well but yep now i can yeah. save a lot of money and most of the card has stayed intact yeah other than that taiwan chai fight as far as we know but like you were saying it already seemed like it was off so positives and negatives for this um i didn't see a ticket sales map but uh maybe someone did and can fill me in on whether it was doing well or bad but i don't think yeah. it was doing the best yeah uh if i'm one they've announced two shows for next year in america already on the ground i think in may and december i'm doing two yeah. in denver i just go in denver back to back secure that as your market it evidently you can get fans into the seats and uh, people enjoyed it. So yeah, I, I just doubled down on Denver being the home of one in America and Ooh. try and get fans to fly in if they want to see one in America, instead of trying to go to other markets. We know Denver is a popular fight town and people will go and watch anything there. I'm pretty sure. So yeah, I, I doubled down on Denver and then, Obviously, Lumpini is the home of one in Asia, but I try and get out to Japan. I know they're looking at that next year. 
I, I think I uh, hearing Qatar is back in play for uh, December. Um, Manila has to come back into the equation soon. You'd think once Joshua Pascio is healed and maybe yeah. Denise Samuanga has an interim belt, they will go there. I'd imagine. I'm also hearing Macau is on the radar. And now UFC are going there next month. I think one are going to go next year. That would be great you, for me. I can I take a say. ferry <laughs> over there, 45 minute ferry. I could even come home after each day if I wanted to, but I wouldn't have probably chill in Macau because it's quite fun there. Do some gambling um, or what? Not that I'm a gambler really, but uh, it's it's fun little town. It's basically like Vegas planted down in, in uh, China. So yeah cool cool place awesome. to visit yeah it yeah. sucks like i said it sucks positives and negatives bittersweet um i'm sure not a great look is it when you you've had this big successful show in denver and then you cancel the next one but um i don't think the fighters mostly will mind because who who was who was on it that was in america you know i'll tell uh, you what my yeah. boy our boy friend of the show eddie abasolo eddie, oh, yeah, yeah. he announced i'm fighting in atlanta and then literally the next day. <laughs> You're not, Eddie. You're going to yeah. Thailand again. <laughs> yeah. But right. I, I hope he's still on the card, at least, because I, that's my boy, and I love watching him fight, win or lose. But uh, Dark yeah, Side says, great. is Christian Lee still on the card? I only see Malikin versus Rug Rug on the poster. I see that as well, but I do still he's still listed, at least, uh, Christian Lee. So is Rod Tang, Adriana Morais, Jake Peacock. Um, oh, Peacock, uh, he's in North America, right, most of the time? Marais as well. Maybe I, I'm going to have to eat my words. Yeah. Uh, Adrian. Yeah, Marais is Florida. Yeah. But Adriana yeah, it's won. tough. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he just wants Marais. to fight. He just wants to fight. Yeah. Um, as long as they all get the same paychecks, same, you know, I, I, I know that Denver obviously had a bigger budget for bonuses, right? Tachi was throwing Wait. them out like though tomorrow. Yeah. I hope he's he's just as generous, even though it's in a smaller arena in Lumpini. I hope the budget hasn't changed, things like that. If anything, they should be saving money. So, Hopefully, yeah, we see like five, six, seven, eight bonuses thrown out, and um, sucks. Yeah, I do love the big stadium shows. In one, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping we get one more this year in Qatar. It looks like. Yeah, and um, let's see what was the one? I saw one in the chat. Chummy boy said, "I saw someone said it's an issue contract uh, ran out with the ticket distributors in the USA." I saw that as well. Uh, I don't think that's actually the case, though. That didn't seem that, um, I don't know. It didn't seem that actually, like, well-founded. It didn't seem like it came from any, like, sources or anything. It was just, like, it seemed like a big yeah. theory, in my opinion. I've, I've heard that, too, and I've heard the other side of it, people saying that's not true to me. <laughs> so yeah. I don't know where to stand on it. Um, yeah, I've heard, what I remember, I've heard both sides of it. I heard that this company was having financial issues, too, to... Uh, take that yeah for what it's worth i don't know i'm i'm gonna look into it more uh what are they called stage front vip stage front vip yeah. um i don't think yeah i don't think that that whole theory was 100 percent accurate um about there was some some pretty huge claims in that theory that i yeah. don't think were the, <laughs> were, were the case and I'm, i was trying to find the announcement um, I could also be wrong on this. Uh, I believe I remember somebody shout out the one watch party chat on discord. Um, I believe someone mentioned way back that stage front wasn't listed as an affiliate on the Atlanta card from the get go. Hmm. I feel like I remember someone saying like, Hey, how do you get VIP in Atlanta? I don't see stage front like months ago. So if they pulled out, it, it, that it just didn't really line up timeline wise in my opinion uh but i couldn't find that i couldn't find that from the beginning well, um, i'll look into it i've now i'm back home uh, i was yeah, pretty busy all this all this news dropped at midnight or so on friday 1 a.m saturday morning and we had a show at 7 a.m saturday yeah. morning i had to be up at five i mean worst timing for me because i had a show to go and cover right and i haven't really been able to dig into it but uh i'll have a little look this week do some uh, snooping around see what i can find yeah because i i don't think i just found the email uh them saying like you're invited to the pre-sale i don't see stage front listed anywhere on this email at least um 
And this was in June, well before Denver. Yeah, I I didn't hear their name associated with it. I think as well. I can. I mean, there's people in the chat here. I think who bought tickets, so maybe they can tell us whether that was associated. True. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. I don't know. Um, oh yeah, Dark said, said, "What happened to Bucheshi versus Ali Akbari?" Um, I haven't heard anything about that. Yeah, um, I think that's probably would end up on guitar because yeah, Alec Bari may fit that market and uh, Buchecha has a hefty purse so you might need some uh, stadium action for that one and uh, some guitar dollars to uh, help <laughs> fund it all <laughs> and I'm hearing so yeah, I'm, I'm hearing the guitar we're going to reinvest in one it's, um, it's dragging out but I think that show will be the big announcement December, it sounds like. I need it. I need it. <laughs> yeah. It seems like every time there's a big momentum gained with one, there's like a weird mishap step back. And it seemed like Denver was so big. Friday Fights 81 was so big. Uh, and then, you know, Atlanta was going to be big. And then January has a tent pull with the Russell Crowe filming, all this stuff potentially – Rod Tang uh, versus Takeru. And I was like, dude, things are moving along. We are trending very well right now. And then Atlanta got moved. Uh, and it, I know it's made a lot of people sour, obviously. Yeah, I think hindsight is whatever this phrase is. <laughs> but yeah, 2020. Two, <laughs> I, yeah, I, I don't think one should have booked two US shows in the space of two months, like back to Close. back. Yeah, maybe space it out. Next month, they're six months apart or seven months, May and December. Much better strategy. Yeah. You don't want to burn out the audience there because even if you are both in Denver, six months apart, seven months, I think they could still do well there. I don't know. Yeah, just it was a little probably a bad idea. I think it would have been better if one had maybe called this off a while, not just a month before. I think that's tough because you know yeah. like you said you bought flights some people bought four, tickets. four days after i bought my flight <laughs> yeah um i was very close to putting down a lot of money on a flight i'm not sure i could have got it back and hotels too so yeah uh it i think you don't want to piss off fans if you're trying to push into a new market like such an important it's market tough. as america you don't want to because one fans in america are very hardcore i would say and they don't want to feel mistreated like that so yeah next if this happens you've got to give a bit more heads up i would say maybe they didn't know until the, that point when they had to and they kind of tried to keep it as long Stay as possible yeah. so i'm just saying if i'm a fan i'd be annoyed i hope it doesn't turn off fans in america who had bought tickets and stuff because uh yeah like you said well so much positivity if your one was gained in the last couple of weeks, you know, with a big show in Denver and then the Friday flights, 81 card was awesome. Rod Tang Takaru. It looks like things are going really well. This is a bit of a setback, but the good thing is the card's still happening. The fights are still on. The fights are still going to get paid. You can still watch it on prime video at the same time. So yeah, silver linings and everything. Um, personally, I'm yeah, a little sad. I can't go, but, relieved as well the yeah, travel I mean, would have killed me but and the Dark fight side, uh, coming through and saying we are fiending for more one shows in america we go into debt to watch entertainment over here <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, and shout out chester boys just got back from hockey gotta get up in five hours i'll listen at work tomorrow <laughs> shout out chester uh, but yeah i mean yeah the, the fights are gonna be good the, regardless of some outside drama you tune in and Lineker's on the card Lineker's on the card and you're going to forget all about it anyways. Um, and you watch him knock somebody out. Um, I think that's kind of all we need to go into. Um, uh, yeah. Fights were good. Denver awesome. or Atlanta is a bummer, but it is what it is. Still some good fights. Like you said, the cards mostly in, uh, intact. That'll be fun. Yeah. Um, any what else who else deserves a shout out um i think you covered all the fights that were key uh, <laughs> yeah yeah wasn't the, wasn't the greatest card but um still some notable talking points for sure and um 
I mean, the way and stuff was the big talking point in fight week. Yeah, that was crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know what, why they did that. <laughs> um, I do think that on paper, though. It's a good idea on paper, yeah. Yeah, it does work well on paper. It makes everything, it's logical. Uh, I think there might need to be like a, hey, we're going to be doing this in a couple months. Like this yeah. event, four events away, that's where we're going to be starting this new way in process. I think it probably would have been a better move. Unless they were telling people earlier and just made it public later. I don't know about that. So the first one was always going to be a disaster, I thought. Yeah. But I think, you know, next month, month after, you would have seen people kind of get a hold on it. But um, for me, the problem is it, it was so complicated. And yeah, I, even just writing the articles I did and the tweets, I was like, this is so much information. You need yeah, to make for it simple for fighters and fans, right? Yeah, for anybody who doesn't know, they changed the way the weigh-ins work. And Nick, correct me if I'm wrong, but now it is a official one-hour window. You have to make weight and hydration. Uh, if you fail, either 20% fine, uh, and you then get two additional hours to make both weight and hydration. Um, if it exceeds those additional two hours, you can no longer negotiate a catch weight bout. Yeah, that was the official process at the start then there were some exceptions that were made it seems like uh it's, with the it, negotiations yeah. it boils down to you've got to have a hydration test pass in three hours then you're you'll still be able to fight if you don't but pass you'll still be fine um yeah yeah you it, again it's so complicated right it's like <laughs> yeah if you pass <laughs> hydration in the three hours uh you can negotiate a catch weight and then your opponent will get some of your purse. If you pass hydration, if you if you pass hydration and make weight, but it's in the second or third hour, you're you've got to give twenty percent to your opponent's charity of their choosing. Yeah. Um, see, it's getting so convoluted now. If you pass in the first hour, it's fine. So you, you, you know, that's the important point. Everyone should be passing the first time, exactly. right? Yeah. But um, and there were some people who failed in the first hour, came back and passed in the first hour. So. Mm -hmm. I think you've got to have the balls to just go with it and say, like, right, we're going to be strict about this. And if fights are canceled, so be it. Yeah. But then they lost three fights. And then another one on the morning of the show dropped off because of a injury. Hero Bo Minowa had a, a whiplash from a minor <laughs> car accident, he was saying. So um, I was like, I what think, the fuck is going on right now? <laughs> yeah. The problem is, you, you can have all the best intentions with this. And I thought it was actually a good idea, but um, in the reality, it's just going to leave you with five fights shows and, you know, you've got to fill four hours of airtime on Amazon. But I, I was joking with some of the producers after uh, outside, just like, Oh, can we have three fights canceled every month? That show was really nice and tight. <laughs> you know, um, we'd, we'd all still be in there. I'd still be here till 2 PM doing interviews and stuff. I'd have a ton more work to do. Uh, I actually like the shorter cards. I think nine fights for me yeah. was perfect. You know, twelve or whatever too. it was, eight. Um, yeah, I think we could chop it down from twelve to nine every time. Be pretty a, a bonus. But then there's less fighters getting paid. You know, and that's that's important. <laughs> and one needs to <laughs> to uh, give these guys and girls fights for sure. So maybe if they go back to having two monthly shows, you know, a prime video and a numbered, they could run nine fights on each that'd be cool yeah anyway plus tangent. friday fights every week yeah 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 cool here we go we covered a lot guys all right so uh one fight night 25 uh shout out once again for the goat mr nick atkin for uh <laughs> joining us uh nick this is an opportunity for you yeah. to plug anything that you'd like to plug sir yeah, you can see all my handles there i think they're all the same on all the platforms i use um was a crazy crazy week 10 days in bangkok my youtube went from 4000 to 15000 or something I'm, I'm now have an army of burmese fans <laughs> thank you <laughs> thank you tan tanzin just um yeah it took me from nothing to something in space <laughs> of a week no it's been a cool month yeah you know i started that channel pretty much in denver and um to see the the response has been cool yeah so just follow me on there I'm, I'm gonna do my own show tonight asia time so tomorrow morning us time um sorry i haven't been very active on there like i was saying at the start of this show i was 
been on the road mostly for the last five or six weeks. Uh, we'll get the podcast going again over the next four weeks. Maybe try and get these boys on my show. Who knows if time can work out. But um, tune in tonight. I'll do my own recap and give my own thoughts on Atlanta. That's about it, guys. I'm planning on just chilling for four weeks. So not much coming up for me. Um, I, I well deserved. See yeah, these well deserved. bags under my eyes. Yeah. From, <laughs> Take uh, that break. Enjoy the time. You know, yeah. and then uh, just come back refreshed, man. Yes, I'll be in Lumpini Stadium for uh, one one sixty nine in about five weeks time what is it november 9th yeah four weeks maybe. that's close i haven't got as much point. time as i thought yeah <laughs> i think it's i think it's four weeks normally we get three weeks and then we're flying out again for another five week but i think uh yeah it'll be four four weeks at home this time i'm happy for that hey everybody Ramiro and will here thank you so much for watching that short clip it's just a small clip of what we covered this last sunday yeah, if you want to check out the full fight card recap, uh, the link is in the description and it's going to be on screen at the end here. Uh, and don't forget to go back and watch our fighter interviews that we have. Uh, and don't forget to tune in live every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 p.m. Eastern. Uh, and you can join in on the fun. Yeah, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. It goes a long way. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching that short clip from Story of the Fight.